Good evening, this is Raf from Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms here streaming to you live high above the keep in the hot air balloon. Tonight I have with me my co-hosts Nindorf and Walton. Say hi Nindorf first. Welcome everyone. How you doing Walton? Good afternoon, doing good. All right, well let's, uh, let's kick things off tonight. Um, first we wanted to get to um, we're trying to stream live on YouTube, so if you're watching us, thanks for checking us out there. And if you're hearing us on Apple or Spotify or uh, Google Podcasts or Anchor, go check us out on YouTube. That would be uh, very helpful. Thank you. All right, Nindorf, uh, give us the question of the day. Yeah, so given current events, I think the appropriate question for me is what do you do with a washed up or semi washed up advanced hero so I've, I've been asking you guys questions about this a little bit you know it's like i got so you know a ninja or whatever you know advanced or plus with say he's only got two summons left out of five what I mean, what do you guys do with them at that point where, where do you see the value right now well i'll let you go uh, first walton uh in my opinion I mean, uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but, uh, you know, I, a lot of, and I hate to get into this point to start off, but a lot of what's kind of moving on the hero market right now is I am seeing more advanced class and elite class moving for the heroes if you're willing to pay um, a little bit of jewel, um, you know, between 100, 200, depending on what you're looking for. Um, and so... It's tough if, in my opinion, if it's a hero that you think is worth keeping, and when I say that, if it's a fisherman that's ranked high in a rare, if it's a, um, you know, basically it has a profession with a stat boost that you're looking to keep, I say rent it out. I think there's always people looking to rent something, some out depending on the market. I haven't really looked at the market too much. And if it's one that you really once it's used up, there's not a, any good potential. I say just try to dish it out, see what you can get for it. I would say I've been taking a bit of a similar approach with instead of dishing them out at the end. Right now, I'm just building the questing army, um, and so I. And, but I haven't had a lot of success with renting. I would say over the last two weeks, with the real boom in jewel prices. Um, and so, you know, I have a, a common Dark Knight hero um, that I'm sitting on with one summon left, and he's a he's a Gen One as well. Uh, so his his uh, summon fees are, are pretty low, and I have him now down to I think like twelve jewel, and I still can't get him rented out. Whereas a couple weeks ago, I think I you know had his second summon go for twenty five jewel, um, and so I'll I'll try to slowly rent out the their remaining summons and and out right now i'm kind of comfortable uh clicking my life away so to speak i will say that you know my my uh daily time on DeFi kingdoms has increased quite a bit um but that's where i'm at okay so yeah that, i think that's helpful so it's basically kind of like if it seems like it's going to be a useful hero moving forward into like adventure quests for the combination of say stats and profession you could rent it out um, to recoup some of your investment, or if it doesn't really maybe match necessarily, attempt to sell because there's always people possibly looking at adding to advance and getting to that elite. All right, I think that's some pretty good advice. All right, well let's go to our current projects next. Um, last time we spoke about the the alert system and the website. Uh, give us some more information about where you're at, Nidorf. Yeah, I got a. A beta site I'll call it up and running and I've sent invite codes to you guys and you know you might have had a crash or two here or there but I think we got through most of those issues and now we've got a fully a functional site um, far as accounting goes like your user logins and registration um, the next piece I got to get to is the alerts I've had a hard time working on that over the last few days again because kind of like we'll talk about here these RPC issues were really hurting the API that I use to pull data from. So I kind of wasn't able to test some things out today when I had some time. So hopefully I've seen some good movement in the, there's a dev page or sorry, a dev channel in the discord. And 
some of that stuff's been getting resolved. So I think we're going to get there here in a few days where we're going to actually, you know, be ready for showtime. All right. Excellent. I'm definitely looking forward to that. And, you know, we'll talk about this a little more in the, the hero price section, but I, I think there's still some good deals to be had out there. And I know you have your, your mind on, uh, or your eye on, uh, you know, a Sage or a Dragoon, but we'll talk about that a bit, a bit more later. So today is, uh, December 27th. It's a Monday. They had an AMA with the business development team today. And, you know, a couple things that, that stuck out to me uh, that I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on. The first one was um, their general overall caution to being posted out on the marketplace or um, going and in, in adopting new incentivized LP pools and how they're expanding. And it sounds like they're taking a very reasoned and, and measured approach which I can appreciate, um, you know, one of the things that they brought up is they're concerned about, you know, people trying to short the price of Jewel out there in the world. Um, and so I, I think it's something that they are trying to keep the, the community's best interests at heart um, and control as much as they can how this is being released out into the universe. I, I think that's a great thing. I don't know about you guys, but a lot of the stuff I've read and some of the crazy swings of crypto have to do with these, like you're saying, either shorted positions or even positions that are something crazy like 10x leveraged. You know, just if you think of normal stock trading, you think of two or three x leverage as being crazy. Crypto is even worse, in my opinion. I think that's some of those practices that I kind of wish the crypto market would get away from so you can get a little bit more stability, maybe. Um, so I, to hear that coming out of the devs, in my opinion, is amazing. And that, it, you know, it kind of bolsters my attitude towards this that I'm going to keep in it. You know, I'm not, I'm not looking to bail out anytime soon. I guess is what I'm going to say because of risks from those sorts of systems. Well, one thing that I did notice is uh, when I have seen some of the huge swings in the crypto, and obviously there's some huge whales out there, and it seems like as soon as they start to sell, people kind of follow suit. But one thing I have noticed with DeFi Kingdoms is, yeah, they'll kind of drop down a little bit, and I see a quick kind of swing back quicker than or a quicker rebound than I have seen, you know, kind of on the regular market. And obviously I know when you guys are talking about um, within the game, it's a, it's a little bit different. And obviously if you get some few bad players in there, it's a little bit different because it's not as broad of a market, but uh, you know, I do have some faith in what they're doing there. Yeah. I appreciate the comment guys. I was just thinking about, um, I read through uh, Sandwich Punch's uh, Whale Watch report uh, that he just released yesterday, and I'll try to pull up uh, some of those statistics, but he gave some information about the, um, the amount of Jewel owned by, uh, you know, large wallets compared to uh, the, the, rest of, uh, the rest of us uh, out there, and it seems to be trending and moving in the right direction that, you know, would have you... Uh, hopeful towards a, a healthier uh, environment with Jewel where, you know, just a few people can't swing the price that much. Uh, but I'll, I'll see if I can uh, bring up the exact statistics once that loads. All right. So let's go on to our uh, Another next thing that I kind of want to bring up, though, oh, yeah, about go that. Ahead. Go ahead. Is I, I, feel, I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of the, um, the main players in – uh, main players, I should say, like Frisky Fox and all them. I think that a lot of them are well invested in the game. So as far as whales go, I think there is going to be kind of, uh, uh, how should I say it, like an inflated number. Because um, I think some of those original you know, people that got, got into this and helped develop this game, I think some of those guys are holding some major uh, jewel and on paper, it's going to look like whales, but obviously if they're part of the development, you know, I have faith in them not trying to tank it. So I wouldn't really consider those people as much as a whale as I would somebody that's not a part of their team. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't really considered that. Basically, since they have a very much incentivized position, they're not going to go liquidate it. 
Well, I'll, I'll say this part about that too is, you know, and the reason why the part I kind of bring up about that is, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to put this, but people's, you know, if you own a hero, it'll have kind of their wallet information on there. And if you use the kingdom watch, you can kind of see how some of uh, the developers of the game, how they're kind of sitting and whatnot. And I was interested to kind of see, and I have noticed most of them are holding a large amount of lock jewel or amount of jewel with a large amounts of heroes. And so that's kind of where I come up with that aspect is I kind of got curious and was wondering, okay, um, how are these guys doing and what are they coming up with? And I'm just kind of interested with it and the, the kingdom watch, kind of just breaks everyone's thing down. And and like I said, some of those guys that are part of the development team, you know, they're the ones with the heroes starting from like 1 to 15. They have a lot of jewel in there. And so that's where I come with and say, you know, I feel like, and I've seen them have large balances. And so with that being said, I feel like um, I don't really consider those people whales um, necessarily within the game. Sure. So I think that's really important to mention and i think that might be another segment that we should do in a future podcast is analytics of some of the developers wallets and their heroes they're holding that's where i've we've got some hidden nuggets in the past and maybe it's worth taking another look at what do you guys yeah, think for sure so here's the statistic that yeah. i wanted to reference um from again sandwich punch um he was on episode three with us i believe um and they also have a, a podcast i believe called the um the inner gardens or the inner circle um and the statistic here is three months ago the top 50 held 52 percent of all the x jewel and now the top 50 wallets only hold 28 percent. so i think that's a, a strong indication that you know the game is getting more diversified um with you know a larger number of x jewel wallets uh, containing you know jewels above five thousand. so Something that definitely has me feeling that as the price of jewel is increasing and it's diversifying more, um, like the game is is certainly going in in the right direction. That and uh, I kind of feel I'm going to add this to it. You know, they were I I would consider um, that's probably diversifying a little bit more just because uh, was it maybe a month ago they were doing the the land giveaways. And that was based on X Jewel, which is the only thing that you can have within the bank. Is that correct? Or can you get X Jewel other places? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but I was assuming that's all you can get within the bank. And so I think people are probably stockpiling that more than what they normally would for those chances at getting a piece of land since it's so rare. Yeah, I, that that is correct. Yeah, I, I think that point. certainly can, can play, play a part or a role in it for sure. All right, so um, Gardens are now live since the last time we spoke, uh, or live in beta, and I've actually been running solely in beta. I've been having still a, a few RPC issues here and there um, with running on, on the main site, and so I've been going completely in beta. Um, I would say, for the most part, it feels like everything is better, except I hate the uh, the the tracking of gen one floor prices it feels like you can't sort heroes that are 10 of 10 summons as well as you could have um <laughs> in the main site how have you guys been doing uh and have you been running in in main site or beta yeah no doubt the summons um filter is definitely broken in the beta it it, it jumps to like seven to 10 when you sort by, you know, highest number of summons left. And there's a hundred percent sure 10 out of 10 gen ones left. So I, I've kind of been struggling with that a little bit. Um, and I'll get into it a little bit later in the gen zero check-in, but I'll just, you know, the intro would basically be that it's, it's kind of been tricky to find heroes to either purchase or rent too, because of these issues. Right, right. Yeah. I think you, it, at this point, you pretty much only can be doing beta. I mean, I've been having such a hard time with that. And, you know, Joel mentioned, or sorry, Nindorf mentioned the other day about how, uh, you know, if you want to try to sell a hero and then you want to go and do a profession, you've got to only use beta. And I was on the regular one and I couldn't get them off of looking like they were still for sale. So I wasn't for like a whole day. I wasn't getting anywhere with it. And it just 
kind of felt like a wasted day where I was getting behind. All right. Well, um, as I'm I'm bringing this up slowly, I guess I'll I'll share the uh, the users, um, or I'll, I'll spare the users from my computer lag that I'm experiencing right now, and just go back to the map main screen. <laughs> All right, so um, <laughs> let's uh, talk through gardens um, or maybe quest returns. Anything exciting that you guys have hauled in lately? Let's start with you, Nindor. Um, so, yeah, the gardens were interesting. You know, you get those first few new items, and you're like, what's this? And they, they seem, you know, they are, all the garden quest items seem to me that they'll be potion-related. Some of the foraging and fishing ones, they definitely seem like they were just kind of, you know, filler. Um, all of these, the descriptions make it sound like they're all useful, which is really cool. Um, and I, but then I went to, I went to just to see what they would sell for, for gold and none of them sell for like anything. So I was, I was a little confused by that, I guess, but if they're useful <laughs> for potions, I guess I really don't care anyway, so, cause I'm, I'm going to use the potions. Um, but the other thing is, is. Um, I did notice that it seems as though gardening gives you better XP. And I, I had I had just recently watched a Climb Crypto YouTube video on this, and I think he kind of said, said the same thing. So it seems as though like your XP is pretty good for gardening right now. If you have a good, you know, skill based gardener, like a, a summoner or whatnot. Yeah, I, you know, I noticed that as well. And one of the things I'm trying to balance in my mind is, I believe they they came out and said that there would be a a second level of profession quests available to those who get to level ten in your professions, and so I have um, one uh, summoner and sage who are both in the nines on fishing, and who are also really good gardeners, and so I'm I'm trying to weigh in my mind: should I go after the better experience right now in the gardens? Or should I try to get to level 10 in case that release releases? And I'm thinking that's far enough away that I'm probably just going to keep them in the gardens for now. <clears throat> yeah, I've gotten into the gardens, but I, I'm i not really invested in the gardens, so I'm just solely there for XP and um, just to get whatever potions or, you know, whatever's there. And, like, like – uh, nine door said you know one of the first things i checked is how much gold can i get for this and it's confusing because you really can't get much compared to some of the other stuff that you're grabbing um but as he said i think uh i think they might have more use and so i wouldn't be confused by that i think they're going to be used more towards the portion potions and you can kind of see based on in my opinion on their names and everything like that so i think stamina potions are going to be worth quite a bit of money once they release, they're that almost uh, <laughs> the the rare candy cheat code. Um, I don't know if you guys ever remember playing Pokemon on the Game Boy, where <laughs> you r drove around Cinnabar Island and you tried to uh, run into the missing number glitch, and it, and then it gave you infinite rare candies. Um, <laughs> well, it'll be a lot more expensive than that. Um, I have a, a strong feeling that you know those stamina potions especially with these these high xp re rewards in the gardens right now um you know if you if you have a few of those you could you could get a level you know maybe in a day um really just depending on how much gold or jewel you want to drop on that so uh could help those out who are starting to feel a little bit behind uh now nine off one last thing before we um move on you found a, a gray rock is that right yeah, I was we we're running some of these quests, and I was like, "What's this gray rock?" And I was like, I looked at it close. I'm like, "Oh, that's a that's an egg." I was like, "Oh yes," I'm like, "That is amazing." I guess I kind of resigned myself that I wasn't gonna get one at this point. You know, you run hundreds of quests, and I know the odds are small, but it's just like, you know, you just assume that you're never gonna get one. And I, I was I drew the lucky straw today, so yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. I was really excited about that. Nice work. Yeah. I'm and for everybody out there, don't feel bad if you don't have one. I don't have one either. I'm the only one in this group that doesn't have an egg, so <laughs> feel bad. It, so, it'll ha it'll come eventually. That's right. So let's talk about egg prices before we go into hero prices. Those have been dropping fairly dramatically. I, I try to keep a bit of an eye peeled on them. 
Um, and it, they are only black market trading on the, the DeFi Kingdom's uh, Wiki Discord. Uh, that's the group uh, uh, who sold heroes before the, the tavern was live, or helped uh, be the go-between before uh, the tavern was live. I've seen the, the price of eggs really go from about 300, 500 jewel all the way down now to it looks like some are going as low as 50 to 70 jewel. What do you guys think? Is that good price, bad price? Walton, how about you? Uh, for me, it's hard to speculate. Um, you know, I feel like if you're questing a lot, I think eventually it will come. It's a really rare chance of getting it. I think they said it was less than 1%. Um, it's just tough because you don't really, at, at this point, I, you don't know how it's incorporated into the game. So you have to kind of take a gamble at it. And um, it's for me not having one, I have to say I like that the price is coming down in case I wanted to get one. Um, but even at 70 Jewel, I think that would be pretty expensive for me or anybody out there with the Jewel price right now. I think it's $13.70, uh, $13.70. So, I mean, that would still be a decent amount of money to spend on an egg. I just... I'm I'm not giving up yet. I guess is well, what I'm saying. So I, I'm I'm almost thinking too that it seems as though the devs kind of have a price in mind because uh, if you can buy a gold egg for fifty, wasn't it fifty thousand gold? Yeah. I don't know what I guess off the top of my head. Maybe we'll have to look this up, but I forget what gold is trading at relative to jewel or dollars. But I, it seems as though that kind of sets the floor because if I can go buy one for 50k, I mean, you know, it shouldn't go above that technically. Mm, um, although the only reason it's above that now is because you there's not that's a good items point. in the game. I like that point that you just made there. I didn't even I didn't realize that they had price points on those eggs. So it looks like gold's at about thing. a penny and a half. Um, so you know, if you multiply that out. That's seven hundred and fifty dollars, not even jewel. So seven hundred and fifty dollars um, to get a golden egg. If you if you're purchase, if I mean you could probably just go out and purchase items to sell for gold at this point, I suppose. You said it was seven fifty. <laughs> yeah. So that that's interesting. So I guess I'm not really surprised because then if you take your seven fifty and you divide it by what is like jewel. fourteen dollars a jewel, that's fifty three jewel right there. So that actually kind of jives. Yeah, very interesting. Well, thanks well, let for me, the, the quick math there. Let me ask you this, guys. Do you guys think the golden eggs is going to be worth more than the eggs that you guys have? That you I, can get in the game? or uh, I don't think so. I have a feeling. I think it's just, just a because, different style. Yeah, I, I think they're okay. going to be stylistic based. And so, you know, the egg that you get from foraging is going to help those stats. And the egg that you get from fishing will help those stats related to that profession um and so I, i'm i'm guessing the, the gold egg is probably going to be more like the monk of it all of eggs i was gonna say the same thing it's the it's the gen, the generalist absolutely i think you're absolutely right all right well um let's talk about hero prices um you know you kind of led us there with the question of the day nine uh so maybe walton Jump into to what you're seeing with, um, you know, only advanced pluses are the ones that are, are really moving on the market right now. Yeah, what I'm seeing right now is um, obviously there's a floor. I think it's around like you pulled it up and I think it's kind of staying steady there around like 31 jewel. Um, what I've, I like the new tool that they've added to beta. So if you haven't checked it out, go to the recently sold. I've kind of monitored that a little bit. I think it's a little bit behind to be completely honest but i've noticed that a lot of them are selling for if it's a regular um just a uh you know like a monk or something they're going anywhere from 30 to 70 to 80 um i'm seeing advanced classes kind of go somewhere around there it doesn't give you too much information so i'm assuming some of those don't have uh, any summons left but i'm also seeing some of the advanced classes if it's going for uh, over a hundred bucks. It's usually an advanced class, um, sometimes all the way up to a rare. And then uh, the elite classes are going anywhere from a 150 to 350. 
Um, I'm not really seeing any movement anywhere else. I'm not seeing any mythics being sold. I'm seeing a few legendaries here and there. And I think the highest one thing that I was kind of tracking is I think the highest uh, uh, hero that was being sold was sold was a legendary uh, paladin. And it went for like 1800 jewel, which I was kind of surprised with uh, how expensive jewel has gotten. That was a, whoever, you know, whoever create summoned that hero and sold it did a pretty good job there. So. Wow. Yeah. That, that is interesting. Cause you know, like we've talked about previously, I'm, sort of in the back of my mind trying to keep an eye out for that three to three dragoon to go with the sages that you know coming off of our ninjas we're kind of able to get um and i've seen some as low as yeah 300 i think that's that's crazy I, i'm just trying to maybe find that right time or i think what i'm looking for is the right stat boost which i know you've talked about wall and two it's like that's huge yeah, I think uh, it's going to matter more and more. The more you level up, you know, and I think you got to look at a, a couple things is not only that, but uh, um, the rarity of what you have, you know. So if you have a rare, if you could get somehow get a rare and then the stat boost in the profession matching, I think you could have a really good, good hero down the road. You know, even if you're not as lucky to get a mythic or a legendary i think even if you could just get an advanced class with a uh profession that matches with a stat boost and it being a rare i think you, you that hero could turn out to be something pretty good yeah i hear you you know when you look at the the stats growth calculator if you can land a, a rare uh sage or a rare dragoon um i believe that's equivalent to a legendary basic um, and so, um, it, you know, it's, that's still pretty strong and pretty powerful. And when you think about it in that respect, um, you know, maybe the floor price, I don't have this, uh, sorted by, by rares here, uh, but I could, um, to check the floor price of, you know, rare sages and dragoons. I feel like there, if someone's just looking for potentially, um, strong stat boosts in the future, let me scroll back up. Oh, so you're talking about not necessarily for something. Not necessarily just for something, for, just for like combat. For gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, just having a great hero, you know, I think it's never, you know, forget about that is you could be creating a great hero and at right now it might not be worth much, you know, but as the game progresses and that hero ends up turning out to be pretty dang good. I mean, I think down the road, you know, if you're, the hero market comes kind of tough like it kind of is right now if you just keep on focusing on some of your heroes and getting them to where you want to be i mean i think you could have some really good heroes that could be worth some good money down the road yeah I, you know not that heroes have really been moving very fast but i'm kind of thinking now might be a bit of a time to hold them if you can um i, I think the price of heroes will go back up um once combat quests are released but but we'll see yeah, here um, is, oh, it's a shiny uh, sage, but I guess you're looking for a dragoon, aren't you, Nindorf? Yeah, you know, we'll see what it all brings, right? Yeah, and I, I think if, if you look at some of the the rares and legendaries um, that are being summoned, that are, um, you know, sages and uh, dragoons, they're coming from a sage and a dragoon trying to go for that ultimate class. And so I guess that, that is something to keep in mind that if you do spring for the, the three for three, you know, you always fall back on at, at least getting, or I should say, 80% chance of at least getting ultimate or elite class. Mm hmm. And I, I do notice you will see if a lot of these sages and dragoons that are being for sale, you'll notice a lot of, if you take a look at the hero history, a lot of these. Uh, heroes have been created by trying to create that ultimate class right right well how are you guys doing on on leveling up i've personally decided to level up six of my heroes so far and i think my my original plan was to only level up between five and six because that's what i only thought i would need for combat quests in the future um but i've been become a little attached to to some of my rares who have brought in some good uh, hauls, <laughs> and 
and so I've, I've leveled them at least one one level um and i i now have six that are level three and um i guess what's kind of going through my mind right now is maybe a little more reserved or thinking that i wouldn't level up guys before that's and now that's changed is that i think that that will be an added value to the sale price in the future that you know you're not only saving someone um you know that small amount of jewel but probably more importantly you're sell, you're saving the future buyer um, a lot of time by having whatever hero that you have leveled up, and so I think it's going to be a big difference for rare, legendary, and and mythic class heroes that people are going to want to you know if they're going to be willing to to fork out that much jewel to begin with, they're going to want to go with the heroes that are going to save them the the most amount of time. So uh, tell me, what have you guys been doing for your level up strategies? I think I'm right there with you. I've leveled up also, I believe, six out of my, I don't know, 13-ish heroes I've got, I'm holding at the moment. Um, and I think what I'll add to it is the, the the random nature of the level ups are proving to be a huge deal for me. Um, I have a common ninja who I've got to level three. And the only reason I did that is because he's a fisherman, you know, which is a perfect match for a ninja. His genes are great. So he's, he's an all around good uh, ninja fisher, except for he's common, right? So you're like, well, that's kind of a detraction, but he's got currently at level three, I'm just looking at my sheet here. He's got 83 stat points cumulatively now after two level ups to get to level three. I also have a legendary pirate who's also level three and he's only got 81 stat points. So he started out with, I believe it is four more stat points or maybe even five more. I forget how you know, every level of rarity you go up when the hero is summoned, you start with, you know, more stats. Um, so he's already eclipsed and even pulled ahead of that legendary character by two. So he's probably, he's netted seven additional stat pluses just on random roll chances. So it's like, you know, this common ninja I got here, in my opinion, is my best my best hero at the moment. And he's been, I was looking at the quest watch, um, you know, on a kingdom dot watch here and he's pulled honestly the best loot too. So it's like, I, I don't know. It just is kind of blowing my mind here. How this just this common hero I have ends up being like my best guy. Nice. Yeah. And I feel like, uh, you're giving my secrets away the ninja stat. And if you can get him with the stat boost or, or key, at, uh, they start off so high for their profession. And I think with ninjas, I don't necessarily think they're going to be your combat guy, but I think they're going to be their, your guy to uh, pull in your inventory and, you know, get a bunch of that stuff. I think I currently have three ninja fishermen with stat boosts. And every time they go out, they bring back the bulk of everything that I get. And I think the price for them, them right now is very reasonable compared to probably what they were a couple of weeks ago you'll find them on the market here every so often where they're around 100 jewel and i just think it's even if they got a zero of zero even if they have zero summons left i think uh you know they're just worth it to get that extra um loot you know that you're trying to get and so i, I always have an eye for them and i always have an eye for a thief fisher i just think those heroes kind of start off a little bit higher um, and they're, in my opinion, the most rounded heroes when it comes to their profession and where they kind of start at. And then obviously, you know, like we talked about, if it's a ninja um, or a thief, you know, their professions, fishermen. And so they're always going to accumulate more stat points for those specific uh, for those specific professions that you're looking for. And they're going to keep on moving high higher. I don't think I currently have a hero, honestly, at a level three right now. And it's kind of been tough for me because I've been trying to sell a few of mine. And so going back and forth and with these RPC issues, it's been difficult. And I think I lost like a day or two uh, just dealing with that. And to kind of bring it into uh, Raph's point, I do see heroes out there that are close to level three or they've leveled up to level three and one consideration that i take into and i don't know if you guys do either but every time i go to try to buy a hero i always try to buy a profession 
um, that it's made for and a stat boost that's within that profession. I just think that's the ultimate way to go, especially with prices. There's no point of wasting your money on a hero that's kind of a mix match. And, you know, and there's a lot of those out there. So I think you really got to do your research and try to find some good ones. Now, when I look at some of these, when they're leveled up, it's crazy because some of them, when you see them leveled up, some might have higher stats at level two than some of these at level three. So it's kind of, I don't know if some of these guys are taking or picking the wrong stats that they want to level up or that's just bad luck or just kind of the way that it's kind of fallen. Um, but it's kind of, if I see a level three and I'm seeing level twos out there that have better stats, I'm, I'm going to pick that level two. And I, I'm pretty sure to be completely honest with you, I'm pretty sure they'll probably even out. Um, down the road, I, I can't see them going too far away from each other, but I, I'm always trying to go for the one that has the better stats. And, uh, I have been taken into account if it's a level three or level two, and cause I've seen some and it's like, man, I, you know, I've seen it kind of with the ninjas. It's like, man, their stats, I have a common ninja and his stats are higher than, you know, your rare and they're both level twos, you know? So all right, well, let's go to Gen Zero check-in. Uh, let's start with you, Walton. Uh, you had a pretty big haul this last time, huh? Well, my first, so as we've kind of talked about, we do uh, two Gen Zero heroes, and we'll kind of determine if you, we, uh, we get them for two summons, and we kind of, uh, it's up to you to kind of determine if you want to rent out and get, two gen ones out of it, or if you want to summon them together. And, uh, I decided to rent my first for all times, just because the renting prices right right now, in my opinion, are unbeatable. I don't, I, you know, they went down so low and with jewel price fluctuating so much, they go back up. But my first, first pull was kind of garbage. Well, I was just kind of lucky to get my, well, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just to clarify, when you say you rent one out, you're, you're hiring one to pair with our Gen Zero, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. I meant I'm renting for what's out there. I'm not renting ours out. So um, I, at this point, I'm still thinking, I mean, the hero market's getting a little tough. Uh, we're constantly, it's tough not to try to create a hero. I think everyone that's been a part of this game loves when you, it's like opening up a pack of cards almost, or, you know, whatever it's that anticipation of getting a great hero. And when I did it for my first round, I got a common and I got a uncommon and I was kind of like, okay, no worries. I'll get my money back. But since the market went down, I'm, I'm kind of lucky to get my money back for those. And so I think one of them, I got my money back and the other one I'm still trying to sell. But then my second one was pretty good. I did a mythic and I can't remember exactly what it was, but I did a mythic with the monk and I got a paladin uncommon, which was decent, but then I had the crappy profession of a fisherman. So that kind of sucked, but it was a five of five gen one. So I can't hate too much on it. I mean, if you're trying to create, you know, the elite class, it is a decent hero to have. So not too hurt on that one. And then I ended up on my, Second one, I did our, our pirate with our rare pirate with a legendary pirate, and I created a mythic pirate. And the thing that made that one great was not only was it a mythic pirate, but it had high stats for mining, and it's a miner, and it has a stat boost for the miner. So for that right. mythic, I couldn't have asked awesome. for a better, because that's what I look for when I buy too. And I know other people look for that when they buy too. So I couldn't have asked for a better. Um, card in my opinion and that's my first mythic that I've ever summoned I think you guys have summoned a couple and so it's, it's exciting when you get that and you know I at this point I'm trying to determine if I should sell it or hold on to it the hardest part right now in my opinion the only hard thing right now is miners are kind of the oddball out right now um, I think we're supposed to get mining what this week it might be pushed back with some of the issues that we've been having and with the holiday and everything. Uh, but the only downside from that is I feel like miners are um, kind of the oddball out where 
they're the only profession right now that doesn't have one that you can do five of five, earn your points, and get the most value out of it. Um, don't get me wrong, you can still have it be a fisherman, a forager, or even a gardener, um, but you're not really maximizing the experience points. And, you know, as we kind of talked about, I think that's going to matter down the road. Yeah, how about you, Nine Dork? You're, you've done one round of summoning now? Yeah, yeah. Last night I had the first round, and I decided to, I was going to give uh, Sandwich Punch's philosophy a roll here. So I decided to, to go try to rent out um, heroes to pair with each of our Gen Zeros separately. So I did, you know, I was going to rent a monk to go with our monk and a pirate to go with our pirate and see if we couldn't get, you know, some of those recessives to also be matched with the dominant um, to give you that higher probability at advance. So the first role I had done, um, which I don't know, it, it, you know, this is how it happens, but I, it was a pirate with our pirate uh, and I ended up getting a monk. So I was like, okay, all right, <laughs> that, that, it's fine, right? It, it all works out. We, that's kind of the two <laughs> classes that we're going for here. Um, but luckily he was a rare. So that's, you know, that was where, you know, to Walton's point, you know, you got to get you know, you all, with commons, it's almost like you could, you could possibly lose money with the hero market. Uncommons, you can break even. In rares, it seems like yeah, you're 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 in the in the in the black here. Um, and so then the second one I did was a a monk with our monk, and I got another monk that was common. Um, the fascinating thing though to me is if you're following Sandwich Punch's philosophy, I'm probably going to sell the rare monk who is a forager um, just basically for profit and also because his his uh, r1 recessive gene is a non-match i want to say it was like a knight or something that didn't really make a lot of sense given the two heroes i chose so i'm gonna probably deal that one um, but the common monk i have actually is a is a fisher and his r1 is also a monk so that's like a great intro that's half the equation I need for a uh, summoning partner to try to go for ninjas. So I think I, I think overall I'd say it was a success for me. It, you know, it wasn't resounding success. I think I'll break even just because of the rare alone. Um, but I think I also like this Gen One common monk. You know, with that recessive monk too to to kind of lead me into the future here. I don't like the common, but you know, honestly, as we've seen. Some of these common heroes have actually been some of our highest performing questers. And honestly, some of the summons I've done have come from commons with uncommons have given me more or more rares. Obviously, it's all kind of luck of the draw, but, you know, it, that's just kind of what I've been seeing. So I'm going to I think that's my plan going forward is like now the next turn here, I'm just going to I'm going to go full pirate and see if I can't get a pirate with a recessive pirate and. I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys informed. All right, I like it. Go full pirate. <laughs> That's right. Coin, coin the phrase. Hopefully not Steve. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for, for us from DeFi Kingdoms for tonight. Any closing remarks, Walton? Uh, honestly, I don't have any at this time. All right, how about you, Nine Dwarf? Uh, you know, the only thing I'd really say is um, it can be a little, you know, stressful with the hero market the way it is, but the, with the jewel price going up, it's it's so, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, right? You, you want to see jewel keep going up because you're invested in jewel, um, but then it kind of makes playing the game more costly too. So it's, you know, it, it's a it's a good problem to have, I suppose, but it's something that uh, I think we need, we need to keep watching and I'm sure we'll talk about it in future episodes. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great topic of conversation and, and one that, you know, when I don't have the uh, the Gen Zero heroes, I'm probably preaching uh, patience. <laughs> and then once I'm sitting on them, I'm, I'm getting anxious to start moving things right away. So, yeah, that's, uh, I'm sure a, a balanced, well-measured approach is the, is the way to go. All right, well, thanks all for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.